testimony I had this week on Capitol Hill, the attorney general already agreeing to answer questions. But the Senate Minority Leader set the sights even higher, inviting the president to testify. I'm Kelly Wright, and for Harris Faulkner, this is the Fox Report. The White House is gearing up for what could be a huge week Thursday. The Supreme Court seats its newest member. The president reportedly could attend, a chance to remind the public about that victory. Of course, we're still awaiting the court's ruling related to the president's travel ban. And Friday, President Trump travels to Miami to roll out his policy on Cuba and fulfill a campaign promise in that key battleground state. But new testimony on Russia and the 2016 election, threatening to overshadow all of it. Attorney General Jeff Sessions and Deputy AG Rod Rosenstein both appearing before Congress in separate hearings Tuesday. Both men have faced scrutiny after the firing of former FBI Director James Comey. Earlier today, Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer called on President Trump to take action. There's a cloud over the presidency, the president said, and that's rightly so. There are two ways to clear up that cloud. One, if there are tapes, he alluded to the fact that there are tapes, maybe as a threat or taunting Comey, he should make them public right away. If there aren't tapes, he should let that be known. Uh, no more game playing. And, of course, uh, he said he would testify, uh, so I'm inviting him to come testify. And we have Fox team coverage on all of this. Garrett Tenney is in Washington with reaction from the Hill. But first, we go to Kristen Fisher, who's reporting live from the President's Golf Club in New Jersey, where the President spent the weekend. Kristen, any response at all from the White House about Attorney General Sessions' testimony this week before the Senate Intelligence Committee? You know, no response from the White House about that at all this weekend. And in fact, they didn't have any administration officials on any of the Sunday shows today. The one person who has been speaking out publicly is President Trump himself. And he's been continuing to attack his former FBI director, James Comey, for being what he describes as a liar and a leaker. This morning, he said on Twitter, quote, I believe the James Comey leaks will be far more prevalent than anyone ever thought possible. Totally illegal very cowardly. Now that line that Comey's a leaker was repeated again this morning on Fox News Sunday by the new chairwoman of the RNC. I think it shows uh, how questionable his character is that he would take uh, conversations that he had with the President of the United States which should be protected under executive privilege and then he gave him to a friend to leak to the New York Times. Uh, I think it proves that the President made the right choice in firing Director Comey. Now, she also called for an end to the congressional investigations into the Trump campaign and Russia. She said that those investigations should stop, but that the special counsel's investigation should continue. And it most certainly is, Kelly. All right, Kristen, so what can we expect out of all these events this week? Yeah, well, you know how last week was Infrastructure Week? This week is Workforce Development Week. Uh, on Tuesday, President Trump is going to be traveling with his daughter Ivanka to Milwaukee, and Ivanka is really going to be spearheading a lot of this effort. While there, the focus is going to be on building up apprenticeship programs, expanding access to STEM fields, promoting technical schools, and minimizing the skills gap. Then on Wednesday, President Trump is set to deliver what the White House is billing as a major policy speech at the Department of Labor. And then on Friday, he's heading to Miami to unveil his administration's new policy about Cuba. Uh, and he's expected to roll back many of the changes that were put in place by his predecessor, former President Barack Obama. So the Kelly. president ahead looking at a very busy week. What about reports, Kristen, that the president is considering postponing a trip to the U.K.? Any truth to that at all? Yes, yeah, so several administration, senior administration officials are downplaying those reports. Uh, they told me that this subject has not come up on any recent calls. The backstory here is that The Guardian reported that President Trump called the British Prime Minister Theresa May and told her that he didn't want to go through with this trip if there were going to be any large-scale protests surrounding his visit. But now we have a, a spokesperson for the British government 
weighing in on all of this, and that spokesperson is saying that, quote, we aren't going to comment on any speculation about the contents of private phone conversations. The Queen extended an invitation to President Trump to visit the UK, and there is no change to those plans. So best we can tell, the trip is still on, though the exact dates of that trip have not yet been nailed down. And I mean, Kelly, who knows if by the time this trip actually happens, if the British Prime Minister will still be the Prime Minister. Kelly? Well said. We'll stay tuned and watch the developments there at the UK as it relates to President Donald Trump of the United States. Kristen Fisher reporting from New Jersey tonight. Thank you, Kristen. Well, the Attorney General's contact with Russia expected to be the big focus during his testimony, including whether there are any more undisclosed meetings. The ranking member of the Senate Armed Services Committee spoke about that on Fox News Sunday. It's an open question. I think it's also one of those questions that, uh, because of some of the reclassifying reports, it's inappropriate to comment upon it. More on this story now. We go to Garrett Tenney, who's live in Washington with more. Garrett, what other questions do we expect Sessions to face on Tuesday? Well, Kelly, a lot of those questions will revolve around issues raised by James Comey in his testimony about Jeff Sessions. Not only have there been those reports about another undisclosed meeting with Russia's ambassador, but Comey also suggested he didn't know if he could trust the attorney general and that Sessions didn't do anything when the FBI director raised concerns about the president meeting with him alone. Those are some of the top questions lawmakers have said they plan to ask, and that works out for Jeff Sessions because those allegations are what prompted him to come and testify to set the record straight. But there are a number of other committees that want to hear from him as well, including the Senate Judiciary Committee, which has oversight responsibilities for the Justice Department. Today on CBS's Face the Nation, Senator Lindsey Graham said Comey's testimony raised a lot of concerns about the politicking of attorneys general. You had Comey suggest that the current U.S. Uh, uh, Attorney General and the former Attorney General were playing politics with the investigation, Lynch and Sessions. That needs to be in our committee. Let me tell you this to the American people. If the Attorney General's office has become a political office, that's bad for us all. So I want to get to the bottom of that, and it should be in judiciary. And despite the red flags in question, Senator Mike Lee, who also sits on the Judiciary Committee, said today he still has full confidence in the Attorney General. I do. Jeff Sessions is a close personal friend of mine, someone in whom I have a lot of confidence. Uh, I, I, I don't know uh, what exactly happened or what meetings he had. I'm confident that Jeff Sessions would never intentionally mislead anyone or intentionally misstate the truth. And as you mentioned, Kelly Sessions will not be alone on Capitol Hill Tuesday. His deputy, Rod Rosenstein, is now also scheduled to testify before the House and Senate Appropriations Committees. And he is also expected to face a lot of questions about the Russian investigations. Well, uh, well, Garrett, there is an investigation, as you said, going on, and we've all been following. How much are they going to be able to say about all of this in open forum? Yeah, well, that will be a really interesting, to wa interesting thing to watch for. you got to remember, not only is this an ongoing investigation, but it's one that Jeff Sessions has recused himself from. Last week, when Rod Rosenstein testified before the Senate Intelligence Committee, we heard him say again and again that he could not comment on various questions because of the ongoing investigation. And while Rosenstein's hearings are expected to be public, the Senate Intelligence Committee still hasn't decided if that will be the case for Sessions as well. So whether or not he answers those questions we may not even hear. Kelly? All right. Garrett Tenney reporting live tonight from Washington with more details about a busy week coming up ahead for Attorney General Jeff Sessions. And as lawmakers wait for the dust to settle, some might be wondering when they'll be able to get back to work. The Russian investigation is casting a shadow over pretty much everything. Ellison Barber has more on that story from Washington. <laughs> Well, Kelly, in between the hearings that are grabbing headlines, Congress is trying to actually tackle a significant legislative to-do list without a whole lot of time. The list includes tax reform, the debt ceiling, immigration reform, and one of the biggest items for the GOP, health care. Vice President Mike Pence says Democrats are, quote, blinded by partisanship when it comes to the Affordable Care Act. They're the ones that gave us Obamacare. And now, as your congressman will tell you, they won't lift a finger to help us rescue the American people from this mess that they created. Republicans say they want to vote on something soon. On a radio show, Senate Majority Whip John Cornyn promised a vote by the end of July. Democrats say Republicans need their help. To do this in private, without hearings, without...
uh, um, uh, amendments. It would be one of the most outrageous uh, examples of legislative malpractice in decades. Some say the president's agenda is simply taking too long. But on Fox News Sunday, the chair of the RNC pushed back on the criticism. Health care, tax reform, infrastructure, these are huge issues. They don't just happen overnight. We're five and a half months in. Uh, the House has already passed a repeal and replace of Obamacare. We're going to continue to work at that. But this just doesn't quickly happen. And, and Republicans are doing it the right way. We're going back into our districts. We're talking to constituents. We're having a diverse uh, discussion. We're making sure that when we do it, we do it right. On Wednesday, the Senate moves forward with legislation to place new sanctions on Iran, but the bill is not necessarily finalized. Senators are also talking about adding an amendment to sanction Russia. Kelly? Allison Barber reporting from Washington. Thank you for more on all of this. Be sure to tune in for a can't miss interview on Fox and Friends tomorrow morning. You want to watch this. It's an exclusive sit down interview with Ivanka Trump. That's tomorrow at 7 a.m. Eastern right here on the Fox News Channel. Right now, Puerto Rico voting overwhelmingly to become the 51st U.S. state. So what does that mean? And controversy among the Puerto Rican Day Parade here in New York City. This parade is a huge party every year, but why was a man who spent three decades in prison and has ties to a terror group on one of the floats? Plus, the latest on the London Bridge attacks, a closer look at those fake bomb vests, the suspects wore. How they were designed to cause as much chaos and panic as possible, that's all ahead on the Fox Report. Dear Predictable, there's no other way to say this. It's over. I found a permanent... At bathfitter.com. Welcome back to the Fox Report. I've got a question for you. So did the United States just get its 51st state? Puerto Rico, an unincorporated territory of the U.S., just voted overwhelmingly to become a state. That's according to the local governor, who says the island, which is collapsing under its debt, has send, is sending a strong message and clear message to U.S. Congress and the world, but not so fast. Brian Yenis joins us live now from our New York City studio. He's right here with me. So what does all this mean, Brian? No, Puerto Rico will not become the 51st state. It will, uh, not. It will not. This is the first time Puerto Rico has, the fifth time Puerto Rico has had but a referendum maybe it vote could on happen? this. I mean, I guess. This is more, more like a poll, okay. uh, essentially. This is a non-binding vote, and people are given a choice to decide whether or not Puerto Rico should become a state, remain a U.S. territory, the status quo, or become an independent nation. And today, the people overwhelmingly chose statehood. Nearly half a million votes were cast for statehood. Just over 7,000 voted for independence and over 6,000 to stay a U.S. territory. Overwhelming, but frankly, it doesn't mean much. This is, this is a non-binding vote, meaning it's up to the U.S. Congress anyway to make the final call. There was low turnout. Just 23% of the country voted. Lowest participation reportedly from the AP in 50 years, partly because three major opposition parties who are against statehood boycotted the vote entirely today, calling into question the validity of the vote. And the first time the U.S. territory, US territory voted for statehood was actually in 2012 in a referendum vote then, and the vote today, of course, happening just among great economic turmoil on the island, 12% unemployment, bankruptcy, tens of thousands of people fleeing the island. So there are some people who believe statehood can actually add the relief they need to help just a crippling uh, debt that's happening down there. You know, I tell you, it's heartbreaking when you see what's happening down there financially with the right. unemployment rate, and of course, uh, Puerto Rico like D.C., wants statehood at some point, so that's opening up a whole new can of worms politically. But let's talk about the Puerto Rican Day National Parade, which took place here in New York City. It wasn't without controversy. It was not. This Puerto Rico is in a constant flux of an identity crisis, and sort of at the heart of this is also Oscar Lopez Rivera, who's a convicted FALN terrorist. He rode up Fifth Avenue on a float today in the parade. Lopez Rivera was a leader of the Armed Forces of National Liberation, a terrorist group responsible for at least 100 and 20 bomb attacks throughout the U.S. in the 70s and 80s. He was convicted of seditious conspiracy against the U.S. government in 1981. He served 36 years, and ultimately his sentence was commuted by President Obama this January. He was never convicted of a direct violent crime, but he was accused of being a bomb maker. And the FALN's deadliest attack was in 1975 at the Francis Tavern here in New York. The blast killed four, including Frank Connor, Joe Connor's father.
to think that Oscar Lopez would be considered a hero and a, a hero of freedom. It's just so insane. It, uh, you can't even get your head around it. His involvement caused corporate sponsors to boycott today's parade. Governor Andrew Cuomo, Senator Chuck Schumer, the NYPD Commissioner James O'Neill sat out as well. Mayor Bill de Blasio, though, marched, and the Puerto Rico Parade Committee stood by their decision to honor him with the National Freedom Hero Award, that is, Oscar uh, Lopez. And, but there was um, some mixed response from today's crowd. To me, I'm a little disappointed that the parade became so political. This is about music and culture. It is about politics, but it shouldn't be the dominant me. I'm glad he's out. He did his time. But that doesn't mean that everybody has to, has to support him. All of this happening, Kelly, on the 100th anniversary of the U.S. granting citizenship for Puerto Ricans. So, Brian Yenis, thank you. Excellent reporting, as always. All right, a survivor from the Orlando nightclub attack speaks out one year after the worst mass shooting in our country's recent history. I was shot at post. Um, I was said I was going to walk again, but I'm walking, and I'm very thankful to be out here. The city of Orlando reflecting on the 49 lives lost that day as thousands of people nationwide rally for LGBT rights. Plus... A success story that helped one man overcome drug addiction and homelessness. A story you'll want to see how he went to get his college degree. He joins us next to share his incredible journey. It's not easy turning your life around. Yeah, he put in a lot of work and showed that he was willing to do it. It can be done. Now in the Wells Fargo mobile app, you can request a one-time access code to use the ATM. Just my phone? Yeah. That'll come in handy if it's Halloween and your Bumblebee costume doesn't have pockets. I was a Bumblebee last year. ...is often challenging. For all of life's moments, count on Unity National Bank. The Pentagon investigating the green on blue attack in eastern Afghanistan in which an Afghan soldier opened fire and killed three army rangers. It happened yesterday in the Akin district of the Nangahar province. The Afghan soldier reportedly opened fire during a joint Afghan-U.S. military operation. The Taliban is claiming responsibility for the deadly attack, saying one of its fighters infiltrated the Afghan army so he could target foreign forces. And now to the latest on the London Bridge terror attacks. British police say the attackers used these fake suicide belts that you're looking at, made from water bottles and duct tape, to create as much fear as possible. This after three terrorists used a van to plow down pedestrians before going on a stabbing frenzy at crowded bars and restaurants in the borough market. Eight people died. That area reopened today after cleaners, painters, and shop attendants worked to clear the streets and clean the streets. Mike Tobin has the latest from our London Bureau. Kelly, images of blood-splattered fake bomb belts are the latest bits of evidence to be released by London police in the wake of the attack one week ago. The fake bomb belts are not sophisticated at all. They're just disposable water bottles wrapped in duct tape secured to a leather belt. Each of the three attackers was wearing a fake suicide belt when they jumped out of a van used in the attack and began slashing people in the borough market area of London. Investigators say the belts were to maximize fear and speculate they may have been intended to help with hostage-taking. They may have been intended to cause hesitation before the attackers were shot. Yesterday, police released images of petrol bombs, Molotov cocktails that were left in the attacker's van. Those were very real. It's not clear why they were not used in the attack. And we're hearing from one of the first Metropolitan Police officers who responded to the scene. Inspector Jim Cole tells a harrowing tale of setting up a cordon to keep people from coming into the market, then sending a medic into the basement of a pub for triage. A gentleman had been stabbed in the stomach. Um, he was taken downstairs to see the medic um, and at that point um, there were still shots ringing out and then a stream of people came out of the market running and screaming so um, we literally just pushed them into the basement of the pub and it was quite a big venue and um, it seemed like the safest place to, to put a large volume of people at that time that were, so it was out of harm's way.
Three days later, there was an attack in France. We have video of the hammer-wielding man who attacked a French police officer outside the Notre Dame Cathedral. The video went public as the case of Farid Eichen is now in court. There's no indication that the two attacks are linked. The Paris prosecutor said the 40-year-old student from Algeria was self-radicalized and he had the profile of a neophyte. Eichen's charges, roughly translated from French law, amount to attempted murder of a police officer in the process of a terrorist enterprise and conspiracy. Kelly, back to you. Mike Tobin, thank you. Reporting from London. Capitol Hill bracing for another potential day of bombshell testimony. Attorney General Jeff Sessions set to testify on James Comey and Russia. But one top Democrat expressing some serious doubt on whether that appearance will actually happen. Plus, President Trump campaigned on a promise to empower the forgotten man. But one of the biggest names on the left accusing him of doing just the opposite. Today, in the White House, we have perhaps the worst and most dangerous president in the history of our country. You do all this research on the perfect car. Tell your doctor about all the medicines you take and if you're pregnant or planning to be. Ask your dermatologist about our Tesla today. Oh, Tesla, show more of you. I'm Kelly Wright in for Harris Faulkner. This is the Fox Report. Here's a look at the top stories we're following this hour. Attorney General Jeff Sessions scheduled to testify Tuesday before the Senate Intelligence Committee. Lawmakers will grill him on Russia and the firing of James Comey. But Senator Dianne Feinstein saying the appearance is not a sure thing. investigation into former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. Some Republicans chalking it up to political inexperience. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer reacting to that. The fact that he's new, the fact that he may not say things so seriously, that's not an excuse. He's the President of the United States and he's got to step up to the plate. And as committees on Capitol Hill ramp up their investigations into possible collusion between Russia and the Trump campaign, RNC chairwoman Ronna McDaniel arguing that it's all much ado about nothing. I'm calling for an end to the investigations about the President, Tr President Trump's campaign colluding on the, with the Russians. There's been no evidence of it. I don't think that should continue. Of course, we need to figure out what Russia did uh, with regards to the election. The president has said that. But not yet do you have a single senator saying that there is definitive evidence that there's been any collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians. That needs to stop. For more on all this, let's turn now and bring in Evan Siegfried, Republican strategist and author of GOP GPS, as well as Jessica Tarlov, Democratic strategist and poster, senior director of research at Bustle.com and a Fox News contributor. Well, here we are. <laughs> After so here we a very are. <laughs> busy week. And before we talk about former FBI Director James Comey, who was fired by President Trump, let's talk about Attorney General Jeff Sessions going before the Senate committee on Tuesday, what can we anticipate from him as he speaks to the senators about James Comey and his relationship with Russia? Evan, we'll start with you. Well, I think you're going to see Democrats come out and try and hammer him as hard as possible. What we actually saw in James Comey's testimony on Thursday was Senator Kamala Harris of California set the stage for Democrats to call for an investigation into him. He is now the scalp that Democrats want. They're seeing an easy opening because there are now three undocumented instances where he apparently met with Ambassador Kislyak of Russia. So what do you say about that? I think there are actually multiple scalps that Democrats would like to see. Jeff Sessions is obviously one of them. I mean, and the others? 
I mean, I think some are eyeing the president. I, I'm not going that far myself, but I, I certainly think if you were watching the James Comey testimony and even what happened the day before uh, with Andrew McCabe and other members of the intelligence community, it's very clear that Democrats have their eye on the prize and they do want to, you know, referencing what the RNC chairwoman said there, that they want to have definitive definitive evidence that there was collusion between the Trump campaign, not just Donald Trump, but other members of it, Paul Manafort, Carter Page, Mike Flynn, etc. But, but look, those are the satellites of the President of the United States, and the President of the United States, uh, according to his own particular stance and take on this, is that go after the satellites, but already let the people know, saying this to James Comey, that I'm not a well, part of Well, he did do that, I mean, and he was plenty thrilled with it, but it doesn't mean that his narrative coming out of it, which was that he was totally vindicated, is even close to accurate. I don't know how anyone watching that testimony who backed the president or the president himself would feel good about what happened that day. Yeah, we're also seeing a lot of Republicans go out, and they are defending the president, but they're not defending the president under his own talking points and saying, I'm completely vindicated, I did nothing wrong. They're defending him saying he didn't know any better, and this was just error of a new political neo. Well, they're calling it political experience. And, and of course, as we know, Donald Trump was a, a real estate magnate a mogul, and now he's working as the President of the United States, so perhaps they're a little, a little wiggly. Yeah, of course there's a learning curve there, but then to, to think about the fact that the President asked certain members of his cabinet to leave the room so he could have private conversations with members of the intelligence community, and we will find out what happened in those conversations in private session. I know that people but see, seem that kind is of the point. Cagey. That's one of the reasons why Jeff Sessions wants to come forward so that he can set the record, state, record straight. I don't think Jeff Sessions wants to come forward. Jeff Sessions has his back up against the wall, and this has been going on for months He's now. in a tough position Right. It's a crisis well, management position for him to go out and say, I'm willing to testify now. He has no other choice. Otherwise, he looks like he has something to hide. He's taking the bull by the horn. Let me bring in something else. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham and Congressman Peter King stating that as but many Republicans are calling for the former Attorney General Loretta Lynch to testify about her dealings with James Comey as it related to that tarmac meeting that she mm -hmm. had with the former President of the United States, Bill Clinton, about Hillary Clinton, and then telling the, uh, according to James Comey, Comey's testimony before the Senate committee, going on to tell him, don't call it an investigation, call it a matter. So now Graham, Peter King, and others want Diane to hear from Feinstein Loretta Lynch. Diane Feinstein has actually said that she'd like so to So should Loretta Lynch well, come forward as well? Oh, I think so. I, I think that while we are doing this, everybody who needs an investigation should get an investigation. I thought that it was a, certainly a big surprise that came out of the Comey testimony that that happened. I just take issue with Republicans running with that as the main message of the day. Like, oh my God, Loretta Lynch. When James Comey stood up there and called Donald Trump a liar multiple times, said that he felt he was directed to end the Mike Flynn investigation. Well, it, that was the only new revelation to come out of the Comey testimony. We already knew what he was saying. No, that and he put Donald color Trump in. was not personally under hold investigation. That that was in new. The for a lot the of reason people. why I say hold that thought for a moment that the that James Comey called the president a liar. The yes. president responded to that by saying, "I'm vindicated," and he went on to tweet that he he basically called uh, James Comey a cowardly person, and he went on with saying that he's vindicated, and his attorney says that he's vindicated. But let's get to another point here. President Trump, as you know, mm -hmm. wants to move forward with a very aggressive legislative agenda. We're talking about uh, infrastructure. This week, workforce development, also tax reform, uh, the repeal of Obamacare and health care. All of this ambitious agenda is not being tabled. People are actually working on it, but no one's hearing about it because of these distractions. So is the swamp so murky that it's covering everything the president and Congress is trying to do to make things right for the American people? Certainly the Russia and the Comey stuff is getting in the way of getting the message out about infrastructure, tax reform, and the AHCA. But... There is a lot of ineptitude on both the House side, the Senate side, and the White House side in dealing with this. The president had his infrastructure week last week, and nobody heard about it, and nobody in either the Senate or the House put forward a bill to put work on infrastructure. So we just talked about infrastructure, not no action. The American people voted in November to have action and see tangible results. Right now, the only tangible results a member of the Senate, who's a Republican, can give their constituents is Judge Gorsuch. And in the House, they aren't even that lucky. They have no major legislative accomplishments to show, and Republicans are very worried. Jessica, the Republicans are very worried, and the president should be worried, because in order to get this aggressive legislative agenda pass, he has to rely on Democrats as well as Republicans. Yeah, and he should do a better job of courting those Democrats. I mean, he What should he do? Well, he should try not calling them names, for one. He should try and being 
a little bit more peaceable, I think, about the Comey and the Russia investigation. I think it's not smart for him to be on Twitter the way that he was this morning. I know the day off on the day of the actual testimony, but this morning coming out and going after them just saying Democrats are just the obstructionists when you have a caucus that you cannot control yourself. Evan, once again, we're hearing tweets. And people are saying to the president, could you hold off just a little bit, back off the tweets. I think people... But this is his way of dealing with the American people because he says the, the media is fake and doesn't give him enough coverage, uh, positive coverage. We're so he does seeing this. this problem with the president's tweets. While he can get out and put a good, forward, uh, good message, he can't, hasn't been putting out a good message. It's sowing chaos and it's distracting from these very things such as infrastructure. I think the president was spot on and right this morning where he talked about how Democrats have no message. They really don't. Look at the leader of their party. He's not even a Democrat. He's a socialist. He's and not the leader of our party. Well, he, who Speaking else of Bernie is the leader? Sanders, he, he attacked the president. Yes, I mean, that part was good, I guess, for Democrats, <laughs> but generally speaking, I mean, that, that's what Democrats are out there to do in those kinds of, uh, okay. I mean, this before, was at a summit, this, this was not All right, when, when will people in Washington pull up their big boy pants and start working together to not only get through these distractions, but get to the business of dealing with the American people, to do what's best for the American people so that the country can move forward with some certainty, with some programs that put jobs and food on the table and make our country better. You're implying that Congress has pants to pull up. That it's the emperor has no clothes. They are constantly trying to dig in for political reasons to get reelected in 2018 and 2020 and not doing the work of the American people. And that's at the core root of all the dysfunction in Washington. Real quickly, Jessica. Real quickly. I see a lot of pants and a lot of skirts, but we need more skirts for sure. Um, what I would say is that I really hope that we get to it in good time for the 2018 midterms, because the truth of the matter is, is that if we have another turnout like we did in 2016, there's a chance we may not be able to take back the House, even though the polls are leaning our way and uh, the generic ballot is shifting towards we Democrats. Go. Uh, okay. Jessica, uh, you get to end on that, night, that <laughs> note for the Democrats. Evan, good of you to join us today. Both Thanks of you, so thank much, you Kelly. so much for having us. Your insights. Well, up next on uh, Fox Report, an inspiring story about taking, you guys want to see this, taking control of your life and achieving your goals. Next, how a homeless man kicked his drug habit and got his college degree. You go, boy. We'll talk to him about the decision that changed his life. That's next.